Resonance is the specific pitch that triggers an exaggerated oscillation in an object. Every object has its own specific resonant frequency. For example, a tuning fork in the key of C has little effect on a tuning fork in the key of D. But if both tuning forks are in the same key, striking one will cause the other to vibrate in sympathy. Another example is a crystal goblet which can be made to resonate so violently at a certain note that it will actually shatter. We have to remember that sometimes out-of-the-box thinking is very difficult to accept and there were many great thinkers in the past whose ideas we could not accept. People actually laughed at Einstein when he came up with relativity. When the father of American rocketry, Lewis Goddard, proposed the idea that we would one day be in orbit and in space, people thought this would never happen, we would never go into space. So I would be reluctant to dismiss Ralph Ring's claims that there are different energies out there that we have yet to tap into. Carr's theories are so removed from accepted laws of physics that they seem like science fiction. But when experiments producer John Tyndall applied resonant frequency to an object in his laboratory, he was amazed to discover that at least part of what Carr claimed may be valid. What's, what I don't know that? what kind of resonant frequency Otis Carr was using, but I've set up a basically an acoustic levitation chamber that, that's going to use resonant frequencies but to levitate this uh, little flying saucer. This is an acoustic levitation chamber. Basically, I'm going to take this little foam cup and hopefully get it to uh, hover and fly around inside just by using sound waves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a resonance chamber. The resonance chamber has three speakers placed on the top, the side, and the back, reflecting the three dimensions of space. I have X, Y, and Z axes that I can control from these three oscillators. It's amazing how much and how little energy you need once you hit it. Ah, see? There it is. Wow. The oscillators are tuned to the resonant frequency of the chamber, which vibrates in sympathy to the tone being generated by the speakers and amplifies it. The intense vibrations set up a standing wave inside the chamber. The cup is actually riding the crest of the standing wave, not unlike a surfer rides the crest of an ocean wave. There you have it. Incredible. <laughs> wow. Can you turn it upside down again? Well, we'll try. There you go. <laughs> wow. Nice. Wow. <laughs> John Tyndall has demonstrated that sound waves can move or levitate an object, which Carr claimed was how he intended to propel his saucer. When you do hit the resonant frequency, all heck breaks loose, all bets are off. How exactly would this relate to the Otis T. Carr experiments and, and UFO well, technology? So if he has stumbled upon some sort of ether resonant frequency that we haven't stumbled upon, then there could be some strange things come out of that. I think it's a big stretch. It doesn't fit any of the existing scientific models that we have, but this idea of finding a resonant frequency to capture, collect energy is an interesting idea. Theory like this, using sound waves to move an object, might have seemed preposterous 25 years ago, but uh, imagine what we might have in another 25 years.